All right, so everyone, welcome to the backend lecture for Node.js, NPM, and Express. So we have just talked about React, and I believe with uh, us finishing lecture, React 2 lecture, you should have a decent understanding of the React front framework. And now with all these front knowledge in place, we do need to have the backend structure to support um, for the front that we are building. And in order to achieve this, we're teaching you how to use Node.js and also Express. And I believe you are already very familiar with JavaScript by now. And you might notice that we can only run JavaScript in our browser so far using a script tag. And what if we want to write scripts using JavaScript and run them using our local machines instead of like running it in a browser? And this is where uh, a framework called Node comes into play. It's a JavaScript runtime engine built on Chrome's engine. Essentially, it's kind of like a mini browser engine that allows you to run JavaScript in your own local computer, even without a browser. And this means that you are able to do a lot more with JavaScript. Things like managing local files, connecting and setting up a server, and also much more. And in this lecture, we are going to cover, first of all, how MP, what is NPM, and also how Node works. Then we'll move on to talk about how you can create any backend APIs using Node and Express. And then we are also going to briefly cover how to make API calls to other APIs using Axios. And we are going to end with a brief talk, a uh, brief discussion on uh, file system. Uh, if you're not unmuted, I mean, if you're not muted, please mute yourself. I, I do hear some echoes. Thanks a lot. All right, now let's get started. Uh, if you want to follow along, this Notion page is linked in the Slack channel. And uh, all the code is like on the Notion page. And I will upload the, upload the folder, like once I finish the lecture, I will also upload it to the GitHub repo. Yeah, now let's get started. First of all, we have go ahead and created an example folder uh, and CD into that folder. And now we, before we dive right in, let's talk about NPM. So first of all, what's NPM? We already know Node is kind of like a JavaScript runtime engine. And NPM is a Node package manager. And Node package manager is a place uh, for developers to post any third party packages, to create any third party packages and upload it uh, to the platform. So essentially it's kind of like a platform a store for all these third party libraries. And as individual developers, you can also go on to NPM and download any package from NPM. And all packages in NPM are free to download and it's very easy to do so. You can just do like NPM install and then uh, you will essentially grab the right package. So how, first of all, we need to install Node to use NPM. So how to install Node? Uh, go to this link and you can install Node.js for free. If you're following along any React.js lecture, uh, you should ha already have Node installed because to use React, you do need to use, you do need to have Node. And just to double check, you have uh, successfully installed Node. In the terminal, if you type Node.v, uh, Node-v, uh, you will see the version number, uh, also npm-v. And now let's get, let's dive right in and build our first packages. Let me put it here. Okay. So uh, how do we create a node package? We do so by using npm init. And npm, if you only do npm init, uh, it's going to ask you for a lot of information, for instance, like the package name, the author name, creation date, a bunch of questions. Um, but using the dash Y flag, uh, it will just 
to like set everything to default. It makes your life easier. So let's do that. And as you can see, after I run npm and then dash y, uh, there's a JSON response returned. It created the package name under the our current folder name. The folder name right now where it is express uh, hyphen demo. And there's also a version number and um, optional description. There's also a main field. The main field is essentially the entry for our server I'll, or the entry for our package. I'll talk about that later. There's also some optional test script. We won't use that at all. So yeah. And with, after we run npm init.y, you can see there's a package.json file created. And let's see what it is about. So as you can see, if we click on the package.json file, it's exactly the thing that's returned uh, inside the terminal. So essentially, this is kind of like a configuration file for npm. And uh, with this configuration, um, the npm can identify your package easily. All right. So right now we have the package in place. And let's say we want to install some no packages because we do need to rely on some other third party package to, um, to build our software. You can't build everything from ground up. So let's install this package called Axios. So Axios is a very, very powerful package that allows you to create API requests to other APIs. Uh, so for instance, if you see some uh, Trello API that can help you dial a phone number and you think it's like, actually, yeah, and you think it's really interesting. And then you can use Axios to call their API. So how to install a package? You, you use npm install followed by the package name. And also uh, you can shorthand the install for i, and this is what I'm doing right now. So as you can see, to install Axios, uh, you just need to write npm i Axios. And after you hit enter, it will handle it for you. And if you see this, plus Axios, Followed by the version number, it says Axios. Uh, it's like indicating Axios is installed properly. Right now, if we look at the file structure, uh, we see there are actually a couple more files or folders uh, appear in our folder. So there's another uh, file called package-lock.json. This package is essentially kind of like uh, another configuration file, but this configuration is used to keep track of all the packages that we have installed and also the version number. So for instance, if you look at the dependencies here, uh, it says Axios, and there's also some uh, metadata meta related to the package, for instance, the version number, uh, the resolve and all that is but uh, essentially a bunch of information. And this is also used, this was also used by APM. And so essentially if you decided to publish this package to the outside world, other developers can simply run npmi, npmi to install all the packages that this package need based on the package hyphen lock.j. Okay. Uh, any questions so far for all the things that we have gone through? So essentially npm init, uh, also npm install. I had a quick question. After we like do the init, um, do we just like copy paste like the JSON code into like a new JSON file in Visual Studio? Oh. Um, so the package.json file is created automatically after you run npm init. And um, yeah, all these files they are created kind of like automatically. So you don't really need to handle anything. Oh, wait, so how, how do you find the file? Like, uh, it's within, so if you run npm init inside the folder, uh, the package.json file will 
uh, directly be under that particular folder. Oh, okay. But I did, so after that, I did like ls, like package.json, but like, um, it didn't really, like, it gave me like a weird error. So I wasn't sure if it actually got created. Um, you probably need to do like just ls. And okay. Yeah, if you do this, you should be able to see package.json. Okay. Okay. Do we have any other questions, concerns? All right. Now let's get started with our very, very first Node.js uh, Node uh, program. And let's create a file called hello world.js. Uh, so if you don't know, touch will create an empty file uh, with the name follow, follow, follow by it. And so let's go to hello world.js. Let's see, console.log, hello world. And to run any node.js file, you do node followed by the file name, hello world.js. And if you hit enter, you can see that hello world is being printed on screen. And you might notice that this JavaScript that we are writing right now is very, very similar to the JavaScript inside browser. So usually we do console.log hello world in a browser. You will also print out hello world inside the console, uh, which is in the browser. But right now it says it's printing in the terminal. So essentially the JavaScript used for uh, node.js and the JavaScript within the browser is very, very similar with each other. However, there are some differences. For instance, if you're in, if you're importing a package, um, this is how you will import a package inside Node.js. It's kind of different uh, from how you will install how you how you will import a package inside the browser. And also, there are a few functions that's missing inside Node.js. So, for instance. There's a fetch function inside JavaScript inside browser. Um, the fetch function is used to, if you remember from JavaScript 3 lecture, it's used to call any APIs and fetch data from it. However, there's no fetch function at all in Node.js. Uh, as a result, this is why we use Axios. This Axios kind of um, just appears as a substitute for fetch function. And you might notice since we are working with a terminal right now, we don't really have a browser to work with, which means that any, any uh, Windows object, when we don't have any Windows object, we don't have any document um, documents object. So for instance, let's go to a browser. Um, let's just go to Google, oops, Google form, that works too. And if we look at, if we go to the console here, and if we type out window, as you can see, there's actually something that belongs to the window variable. We can also do window.document. As you can see, the document is kind of like the entire HTML. However, if you do the same thing here, like if you're trying to console.log window.document, If you do this, you will see that it shows window is not defined. This is because since we are no longer working with a browser, we don't have a window at all. Alrighty, any questions so far for our very basic um, Node.js program or 
uh, kind of like JavaScript for Node in general. Alrighty, now let's move on. So we have our very first Hello World program in place. However, we do want to build more than a Hello World program. So let's get started with kind of like the main goal of today's lecture, which is building a web server using Node and also Express. So let's, um, let's first of all create a new file called index.js. And as you might recall, if you look at package.json, it says the main here, it's index.js. Essentially what this means is that when uh, another user is trying to use this package, um, if they run this particular package, index.js is going to be the first thing that the package executes. It's kind of like a main function in Python. So yeah. And usually we'll just put every uh, thing inside the index.js file. And um, to create a web server, we do need to use something called Express. Express is a web package that allows us to set up web server in a very fast and also a pretty simple way. It abstract away many of the Kind of like annoying details of how to handle like API calls, how to do um, web interfaces essentially. So let's go ahead and ex uh, install it first of all. So right now we have Express in place. Um, if we take a look at the package uh, hyphen log the JSON file, as you can see, we have a bunch of uh, new packages installed. This is because the Express itself is a pretty big package and it comes with quite a lot of other packages. But as you can see uh, here, Express is listed, so we're good. And now, and also you can see it here inside dependencies for our package. And this is kind of like an indication of Express being solved successfully. And now let's be our very first. Hello world server. You can get rid of Axios actually for now. And as you can see, uh, we, can, we can leave it here. So this is how we will build a web server using Express. First of all, we uh, require Express. And this is essentially a way for us to import the package into index.json file. And after we import it, we call it using, uh, we just directly call the package and the package will return an object. And this object is very powerful as this is kind of like the entry point for us to build the web server. And it has a bunch of very, very cool methods that we'll be learning in this lecture. So one of the very first uh, methods called dot .get. Dot .get is essentially saying that Every time this web server receive a get request at this particular URL, it will do the following inside this function. Okay. And uh, inside this function, so uh, what, so app.get it takes in like essentially two parameters. First of all, this is a URL. The first parameter is a URL, and second parameter is a function. And this particular function needs to have two variables. The first is a request, second is a response. And if we use response.send, and then we can directly send back a string using this function. And essentially kind of like the main uh, flow of this function is that when when a user calls, uh, when a user send a get request to our web server, we will send back a hello world to them. 
And this is essentially what this function is trying to do. There are also a bunch of other functions. Uh, for instance, um, there are get requests, there's also post requests. And if you want to do something regarding post requests, it's essentially the same syntax. You do post and then followed by a function. Okay. And now let's take a look at this function. This is app.listen, and it's listening on the port 3000. And so you can also change it to, for instance, like 8000 or 8080. It's up to you, but right now we're using 3000. Doesn't really matter what which port you choose, as long as you as you're as long as you're choosing something that's like not prohibited by the computer. And once you call app dot listen, um, the app will be start listening for all the requests coming in yeah. from the user. And this particular function right here, this is a callback function. It's essentially saying once the app starts to listen on this particular port, it will do the following. And in our case, it's just simply logging, um, saying that the example app is listening at this URL. I know this might be a lot to take in, but let's actually go ahead and run the code and see what do we have. So to run this, Let's do no index.js. And right now, as you can see, it shows example app listening at localhost 3000. So let's go to uh, localhost 3000. As you can see, there is hello world now displayed inside the browser. And essentially this hello world is a, uh, so why the browser will shows up a hello world is because uh, when we visit the browser in this link, it will automatically send a get request to this particular link. And uh, since we're simply looking uh, at the root URL, which means it's simply like this URL, and this URL is essentially like this URL. This is three cells here. Okay, and uh, when it sends a get request to our web server, it will go to this particular function and then send back a hello world. And this is how essentially the get requests work. Any uh, questions so far? Yeah. A quick question, is the browser sending the get request? Uh, yeah, in our in this case, a browser is sending a get request. Okay. So essentially, um, if you visit any browser, uh, you, if you visit any website, you are essentially sending a get request to that particular uh, URL that you are visiting. Right. Okay. And usually, to work with uh, backend development. We use something called the Postman. And here I've already opened it up. And Postman is a tool that allows us to send, AP, to send uh, requests. And so for instance, a get request, usually you can do that by using browser. However, if we want to send uh, some other requests, uh, Postman is a little bit more easy, uh, a little bit easier to use. So let's say we want to use a Postman and here we are sending a get request to this particular link. And let's click send. As you can see, as a response, it returned hello world inside here. So this is essentially very, very um, handy when we are doing any backend development. And we can create, for instance, another request and then there are a bunch of uh, HTTP methods to choose from. So yeah, we'll be using the Postman pretty uh, quite a lot throughout this course. Do we have any other questions for um, the get methods and listen method?
All right, now let's move on and start to add more routes. So this is something called a route. A route is essentially saying that when the user visits this URL, and in our case, it's kind of like the root URL, um, it will be redirected to this function and it will be sent a hello world back. And to add more routes, we can simply, for instance, we can simply do another get app.get. And this time, let's say we want to, actually, let's just copy and paste it here, easier. Okay, and now let's go through what we have written. So, um, I believe this two now is optional. All right, so right now, as you can see, we are actually trying to build a pretty dumb databases. And it's called stupid DB. And um, the database, why it's called stupid DB is that once the server is like finished running, it won't actually store any data into a local like computer. Um, this is because we haven't taught you uh, how to actually use the database yet. So this is what we all settle with. However, the database is still pretty useful. Right now, the stupid DB is an object, and we also have a counter. Essentially, the users, uh, we want the users to uh, use post requests to send data inside our stupid DB. And the goal is to keep track of all the user data that the user sent to us and indexing them accordingly. And to achieve this end, we are also providing the user with a set of APIs. So for instance, uh, one of our route is at slash info slash index. And slash info slash index at this particular route, the user can get the current index of the database. So essentially if there are like three items stored inside database, the user will then get a three. And if there's no items stored in the database, they will get a zero. And we also have a API called info slash capacity. Info slash capacity is essentially getting the capacity of our database, essentially how many data we are storing right now. We're also going to build something called db slash all. This is essentially returning all the items stored in the stupid db object. We're also going to allow user to get one certain item from the database. And essentially our database structure is going to look something like this. Uh, so it'll be like this, and it'll be one orange, for instance, oops, orange, and two, nada. So this is essentially how the um, data structure will look like. And for the user, if they want to get a certain item from the database, for instance, the first one, they can, uh, for instance, like the zeros one, I guess, since we index from zeros, they can just do slash db slash zero to get a certain item from the database. And for now, this is like all the APIs that we're going to go in this lecture. And let's get started with something pretty simple. So first of all, our homepage. And here we are doing um, for, so for our homepage is essentially the root URL. And we are directly sending back stupid DB API. Actually, let's just say, welcome to stupid DB API to add more flares. So once we uh, finish modifying, let's run this node server again. And since we haven't changed our route yet, let's send the get request to this particular route again. As you can see, right now it says, welcome to stupid DB API. And now let's take a look at our next route. 
This round is used to send the current index of our database. And our, in, uh, our database is tracking the index simply by using a variable. So how will we uh, send back this variable is directly sending this back. And we do this by using rest.send. So it's essentially the same thing here. And we wrap the variable inside, an, uh, inside the curly bracket as a JSON object. So right now, if you look at this, like the same inside the curly bracket, right now it's only an object. However, when we call rest.send, express will automatically convert it into a JSON object. So let's try this. Let's try using Postman. And this row is uh, slash info slash index. So let's go to that route. Oh, actually, let's build a new request. So get copy and paste this info slash index. Let's save it to uh, express demo. And if we hit send, as you can see, we get back counter equals to zero. And you might notice that there's a um, quotation mark surrounding counter. And this is because with the help of express, it will automatically convert the object to a JSON object. And inside the JSON object, everything is wrapped inside double quotation mark. So this is our info slash index route. It returns the, um, it simply returns the counter number. Do we have any questions so far? Should we already download it like our installed Postman? Um, if you haven't, feel free to download it. Uh -huh. But Postman is a pretty, pretty, pretty useful tool. I think okay. you can just find it by Google it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you haven't, please download it. It's pretty useful. And um, to use it, it's pretty straightforward. You can just like create a new folder or a new request here. And then you can choose the request type here. And then you can like input the URL that you try to um, get the request from here. So yeah, kind of like a very brief intro to Postman. All right. And now let's move on to the second row. Uh, actually, technically the third row. And this row, is for us to get the capacity of our database. And the capacity essentially is just the size of this stupid DB. And to be honest, we can simply return a counter. Um, however, we can, or we can do it like this. And uh, right now we are doing it like object.keys, stupid DB. This will return essentially an array of keys inside stupidDB. And after, once we have an array, we call it all that. And this will give us kind of like uh, the number of uh, name and value pair inside stupidDB object. Uh, there's a question in chat, why doesn't stupidDB need a lot in front of it? Oh yeah, good catch. We should probably do a comps in front of it. Um, so usually if the, cause JavaScript is a pretty dynamic language. If you forget to put like a let or a cons in front of a variable, they will just do var. So it will default to like, right now cause stupid DB is like, uh, we're not really going to modify it. We're just going to add it by appending by appending to it, so we can make it a constant. Okay. And now let's try to get the capacity. So let's change it to capacity here. And if we hit send, 
as you can see, it shows capacity equal to zero. This is because we have we don't have anything in it. We can actually just add something in. So let's do zero orange. And the counter it should actually be one right now. Oops, we do need to uh, rerun the server. And as you can see, if we add an orange in and run the capacitor again, it will return capacity equals to one. So yeah, this is just kind of like a way for us to, another way for us to keep track of the capacity of the database. Let's go ahead and rerun the server. All right. And now let's move on to these two routes. And these two routes are also to get requests routes. And one's at slash db slash all, and the other is at slash db um, id. Okay, let me actually let me get my charger real quick. Uh, sorry about that. to charge my computer. Right. And if you look at slash db slash all, this is a method to get all items from the database. And how we'll do that, since uh, stupid db is an object already, we can simply pass it through rest of send. And rest of send will automatically convert this object into a JSON. Okay. And since we don't have anything right now, this probably won't be that exciting, but let's see. So let's go to e slash all and hit send. As you can see, it's an empty curly bracket. Um, this is because we haven't added anything into it yet. Let's try to actually hard code something here. So for instance, let's still do zero orange. Let's refresh again. As you can see, right now it shows up as zero orange. And uh, Oh, there's no no long stone. That's sad. Okay. So right now, let's go ahead and delete our hard coded zero orange. We'll be working on kind of like adding, uh, allowing the user to add their customized items into DB later in the post and the put row. But right now, we also have another row called DB, and then followed by ID. And as you can see, there's a, there's a column uh, in front of ID. And this is actually saying match anything after the slash DB, okay? And this is essentially matching this kind of uh, route. So DB, if you do like one, two, three, and then inside this function, ID will then be one, two, three, okay? And how you can get access to the ID is by using the request object. As you might see, we haven't used the request object at all right now. Uh, we have only been using the response object. So the, for the request object, the request object is used to get all the inputs from the user's request. So for instance, right now we are matching the um, ID inside the URL parameters. We can do that by request.params.id. And this way we can match the ID here after the database. What we can do here is do console.log ID just to see what do we get. Okay. Now let's rerun the browser again. And inside this function, 
we are first of all checking whether the ID is inside StupidDB. And if it's inside StupidDB, we're going to send back the corresponding item. And if it is not, we'll say no object found sorry, with this particular ID. And now let's try to access, say, DB0. As you can see, it says no object found with this ID because we don't really have anything here. However, if we hard coded zero orange, and let's rearm our index.js, let's send it again. As you can see, we get back orange. So this is essentially how do we get a certain item from the database for the user. Do we have any questions so far for all the get requests that we have just implemented? Oh, and by the way, it prints out zero here. Um, this is because we have console.log ID. As you can see, the DB right now is DB slash zero. And the request of parameters the ID, uh, the thing that we are logging out is also zero. This means that we are getting the ID correct code. Any questions so far? Does this make does this all uh, make sense to you all? I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. When we do const id equals rec dot params dot id. Um, what exactly is params.id again? Yeah, so um, the request uh, object has a lot of different attributes. And one of them is the params. And the params is essentially, it's saying that using this kind of like matching pattern and use this matching pattern to match whatever URL that we, we have. So right now, so for instance, we are visiting this, the user is sending a get request to this particular URL. And this particular URL, as you can see at the end, it matches like right here, it matches the DB slash ID format. Mm -hmm. And if it matches this format, the ID will have the value of zero. And if you change it to, for instance, one, two, three, it will be one, two, three. And to access this ID variable, we do it by using request.params.id. And uh, later, if the user puts something in, instead of in the URL parameters, if it puts something inside the body, we are going to do something like request.body. Blah, blah, blah. And this is just essentially different ways to access kind of like user inputs. Okay. All right. Cool. So right now we have all the get requests in place. However, the user doesn't really have a way to create or to add any items into the database. So let's do that. What we need to have is two, another two requests. One is a post request and the other is a put request, okay? And uh, for the post request, so you, if you recall from our REST development lecture, the post request is usually used when a user fill out a form. And then, uh, so for instance, if it's a to-do list app, the user wants to create a new to-do, they will fill out a form and then send submit. And usually uh, the front-end developer 
uh, after the user clicks submit, they will let the user send a post request to the backend database. And this is where our post request uh, comes into place. Um, to, handle a, to handle a post request, you do app.post followed by the URL. And you might notice that we are um, doing something pretty similar to app.get. And for instance here, for this put request, we're actually repeating the routes. This is okay to do because it, even though the route is the same, we're using different methods on the route. So we are, we are okay. We won't have any conflicts. And now let's go back to the post request. So usually post request, it comes with also a body. So the body inside a request is kind of essentially like a um, paragraph of text. Yeah, let's do row. And inside Postman, you can create post request by simply uh, changing get to post. And then inside body, we do need to write something. So right now, uh, our standard is to do item and then followed by the item that the user wants to add. Okay, let's change it to JSON. And if we look at a route, it's as slash DB. So let's do slash DB. And as you can see, so this request, it sends out a post request at this URL and inside the body, it has an item with orange as value. And to get access to this particular orange value, we do so by using the request object again, but instead of like doing request of params, we do request of body. Request of body gives us access to the body like here. And to access the item, we do request our body the item. And so we store the item in place and then we add the body item at this particular index. So remember we are keeping track of a counter. And once we add the item in, we do need to increment the counter by one since, the, um, since we don't want to override the previous item. And once the counter is incremented, the essentially the function is like finished. And we can do a rest or send post request successful, item placed, followed by the item. Now let's try that in real time. So let's run that again. And let's send it. Oops. It says can I read property item? Huh, that's pretty weird. Let's uh let's see what's wrong. Post DB. Can I read property item of all defined? Huh, that's pretty weird. Let's try. Yeah, it shouldn't be like this, huh? Oh, it's probably because, okay. I see, so we probably still do need to include those two lines. So yeah, and um, sorry about that. And essentially to, for the express to properly kind of like decode the body, we do need to include those two lines. And those two lines, the first lines, they will um, change everything into JSON. I believe this is already automatically done for us. However, it's, we can always include this to be sure. And second of all, you are encoded, extended true. This is essentially just a way for us to um, kind of like make sure all the URL is properly UTF encoded so that we won't have any weird characters into our uh, URL requests. So with this two lines in plane, let's try to run that again. Okay. If we hit send again, as you can see, it says post request successful. 
item place orange. Okay, so essentially what this post request route is doing is it first of all gets the orange value and then assign into the stupid DB and then it log it back. And since we can already add items into our database, let's try to add something else. So let's try to add an apple. As you can see, it says add and place apple. Let's also add a banana. All right. Now we have this fruits in place. Let's run our get request again. So first of all, let's get our current index. And let's go to slash info slash index. We're sending a get request. As, as you can see right now, the counter is three because we have three first inside the stupid DB. You can also change it to capacity and send it again. As you can see, it's also three. And if we visit db slash all, as you can see right now inside stupid db, there are three items. First is the orange, uh, well, zeros is orange, the first is apple, and the second is banana. Okay. This kind of like acts as a proof that we have successfully uh, make sure all the items are added into our database. Let's, we can try to add another thing inside. So for instance, lemon send, uh, we can send the R, uh, get R again, as you can see, uh, the lemon now shows back. And since this is not really a real database, if we stop the server and rerun it again, if we send the um, slash all again, as you can see, it becomes empty bracket. This is because every time we run the server, the database will be initialized to a default kind of like empty bracket. Once we learn how to use a database, we can store all this information actually on a database. And then um, all the data, all the information will be preserved, uh, even if the server is down. So this is our uh, very first post request. Do we have any questions, concerns? All right, now with the post request in place, we have already accomplished quite a lot. Right now we can add items in and we can get back all the items. However, say the user make a typo. For instance, lemon, they do lemon. And they want to update this particular item to lemon again. And there's right now no way to do that. And to make sure they're able to update a, uh, a particular item, let's create a put request. So usually put request is used to update any items. Okay. And uh, for this particular pull request, we're also matching the URL parameters. So for instance, if the user wants to update uh, uh, in our case is to update the first item. Then we need to visit slash one. So this is actually indicate that we are uh, going to update the first item. And also we need to include uh, something in the body. So instead of lemon, lemo, we need to do lemon. Okay, let's change it to JSON. Okay, 
So this will our this will be how our pull requests look like. And how our pull requests work under the hood is that first of all we'll get the uh, ID. This is similar to the previous get requests that we have written. And although we have actually never used it before, I just realized. I guess this is a good time to use it. So let's create another get request and let's get the first item. So as you can see, in our uh, in this get request, it returns level. Okay, and right now we're just running the get request. This is essentially like if we put one after it, it will only return uh, the value corresponding to the index one. Now let's go back to the put request. So we are getting the index of the data similar to how we are getting the index of data here. We do it by request of params ID. And since we also need to get the uh, kind of like the value inside the body, we're also doing request of body the item. And we are also doing a check. So saying if the ID is in the stupid DB database, we uh, insert it. Otherwise, we will just send back an error message saying that no, no objects found with this particular ID. And if the update is successful, we return a new item followed by kind of like the actual item value. So let's do that. And if we hit send, as you can see, it returns new item lemon. And let's try to run the um, db slash all again to, to see whether this is like updated successfully or not. So let's run this again. As you can see, we have lemon. Let's try to update this again. So let's this time let's try to update the zeros item to Apple. If we send it, as you can see, it says new item Apple. And if we send it again here, it says zero apple one lemon. Okay, so this is our put request. Do we have any questions so far? All right. Now I believe we have covered uh, all of the requests that we're going to do. Uh, let's talk about Axios. And Axios is a very, very good tool for us to send requests to other people. And so right now all the app.get messages and app.put, app.post, they are all handling kind of like requests directed to us. However, say we want to, we're interested in, for instance, the NASA API, and we want to kind of like get some data from NASA, what we are going to do. First of all, let's actually take a look at the NASA API. So this is kind of like my favorite API. It's run by NASA and you can, uh, have access to this by going like NASA API, by Googling NASA API. And it's right here. They are all free to use. And right now I'm not using my own key, I'm using the demo key. And so for this particular API request, it's uh, if we send a get request to this URL here, we will get the astronomical picture of the day information. So as you can see, the astronomical data of the day today is this particular picture. And with the title, I don't know how to pronounce it, but some star cluster. Yeah. yeah. Let's say we're interested in this information and we want to simply return all the information back to our user. What should we do? 
So in order to do this, we need to, we need the help of Axios. Uh, since we already installed it, let's import it here. And let's add this routing. This route will be um, doing the route at slash NASA. And how we are going to use this uh, Axios package is by calling um, axios.get. And Axios function very, very similar to express. So say we want to create a get request, we can simply do axios.get followed by the URL of the request. If we want to send a post request, we can just do axios.post. Okay, right now we're doing get request. So once we send a get request, we can follow it by using dot the method. So the dot get request, it returns some promises. And uh, so essentially promise is uh, kind of like a delayed object. Since all the communication across the internet, they do require some time. Promise is kind of like, um, we will promise there will be some variable here, but it's not here right now. And to use this promise variable, we can do dot then. We can use dot then method after the dot get request. So dot then is saying that if the dot get request went through, what we are going to do. And what we are going to do is simply to return the response dot data back to the user. So essentially like we return all the data back to our user. And if there's something wrong happening um, during the get request, we will catch the error and send the error back to our user. Okay. Now let's try to use, uh, let's try to see. So let's send a get request to slash NASA. Actually, I forgot to rerun it. And if we hit send, as you can see, we have a bunch of data. The uh, astronomical picture of the day returned. As you can see, the Palomar globular star cluster is returned here. And so yeah, this is how we will use Axios. Essentially, if you want to send any kind of request, you just do Axios followed by the request type, followed by the URL that you're sending. If the, if the request contains any body, you can, simply by, uh, you can simply follow the URL by a curly bracket. And anything that go inside the curly bracket will be the body of the request. Any questions for how to use Axios? All right, uh, let me just more check. All right, great. Now let's move on to the final topic of today. We're going to talk about node and also file system. So this is uh, kind of like a main difference between node and JavaScript inside browser. So essentially node is able to create files on a computer. Now let's say we want to build an API where the user can input the name and the type of a file and the server can create it, okay? And the API request that the user will send is through this link. So it's through this link. Oops, let me copy the wrong thing here again. Okay, yeah, it's through this link. And this link has two URL parameters. The first is a name parameter. 
The second is the type parameter. And this, uh, actually, these two are called queries. It's not, it's not really parameters, sorry about that. And we access them differently, okay? And let's try to build an app.get request. So let's say we want to create it under create or request response. Since we are going to create a file with name like this, for instance, here it's resume and type text. We do need to get those two values. And how do we get those two values is by using request.query.name. Okay, so instead of doing params, if the URL is like something like question mark followed by name and value pair, instead of doing params, we need to do uh, query. And let's do type as well. Type, type. And right now we have name and type in place. We also need to add the file. Uh, we first of all, create a file name by concatenating a dot between name and type. So for instance, we want to, if we want to create like resume.txt, we do need a dot be, uh, between name and type. And then we use the FS package. The FS package is called a file system package. Okay, we do need to import it here. So let's import it right here. And let's actually go ahead and install it as well. So npm ifs. Okay. Right now it's installed. And let's see. So the file system, how the file system package work? is that you call fs.append followed by the file name and then followed by, uh, I think this is a route. I need to double check actually. We can double check here. Also, oh, this is a data. Yeah, so this is a data to write and we don't really need any data for now. Let's just make it empty. And it also takes a callback function. The callback function is essentially a function that will be wrong once the append file is ended. And the callback function is pretty straightforward. It says that if there's any error, we send an error. Otherwise, we send back a message saying, uh, first of all, the file is created with name and also the type returned. So let's try to create a get request and see this in action. So let's copy and paste here. Uh, let's say we want to uh, send a get request and create a resume.txt. If we send, oops, we have a uh, rerun the server. So if we run the server and if we hit send, as you can see, it says message created, a file created with name resume and also type text. And if we look at the folder right now here, as you can see, is uh, there's an empty resume.txt file created. We can also go ahead, let's say, create resume type equals PDF. And if we send it again, as you can see, it shows resume.pdf. However, it does show it's a corrupted PDF file because like PDF file, they do require some data in it. We don't really have any data. So it says it's corrupted, but it's all right. So this is how we will uh, work with Curie and how we can work with the file system using Node. Do we have any questions? If you have any questions in general or for this lecture, 
Uh, feel free to say it out loud now as well, because this indeed is the end of our lecture. And I will share the attendance form right now. So one second. Okay, so this is our attendance form. I have sent it in chat. And the magic word today is index.js. Remember to fill out the form so that we can keep track of your attendance. And if you don't have any questions, feel free to leave.